Hello everyone, I just wanted to go over the first major assignment just to give you kind of more instructions verbally in terms of how you could approach this assignment. So in terms of page specifications, everything should be pretty self-explanatory. Again, I put the um, MLA guidelines in Canvas, everything, you know, everyone's been submitting correct files. And then of course, um, everyone, as far as I know, have been doing Word files, you're following the margins and everything correctly. So what I want you to do is research two scholarly sources. So um, we'll get into what I mean by not reviews in a moment, but basically peer reviewed essays, because reviews are not essays. Basically, what I want you to find is any kind of two sources that discuss the nature of literary and cinematic adaptations. I want you to just kind of research to your interests. Uh, so I don't, I'm not really like giving, you know, specific things to find. That's why I kind of gave you a list of just general terms. So if you want, you could use, you know, an adaptation pair. So if you love Harry Potter or Fifty Stage of Grey or um, Twilight or... Um, you know, Marvel movies, you know, anything that's been adapted from literature to film, you could research that specific movie and literature pair. You could also research general kind of scholarly terms. If you're just, if you're not familiar with adaptations and just kind of want to get more into um, what uh, adaptation theory is in terms of film studies, you know, you could look up terms like fidelity, intertextuality, appropriation, because there is a difference between adaptation and appropriation. There's a lot of parody, you know, that is involved with adaptations. Um, you could type in adaptation theory in general, adaptation criticism, even, um, and this gets into like, you know, more of the academic territory, um, but like the dialogic process, all of these terms are what scholars use when they talk about film adaptations or any kind of adaptation from one art to another. Now, the scholarly sources must be from legitimate journals, scholarly journals, of course, or essay chapters from books, because, you know, you'll be able to find a lot of different uh, books on, you know, Marvel movies and so forth. So um, and if, if you find a book, just do a chapter, don't do a whole um, book, because that would be impossible to uh, annotate, uh, especially given our time. So must be from 2005 to the present, you know, just to show, you know, good kind of, you know, contemporary kind of issues with adaptation. What you'll do is summarize what each author argues, then compare and contrast them in terms of another paragraph. So no matter what, there should be, I don't think that's correct. Yeah, I checked with the so syllabus. It's two to three pages. So do not go over uh, three pages. You know, essentially, you, no matter what, you should have at least three paragraphs, uh, but, you know, probably more, um, which I give a kind of a good breakdown here. So what I'm expecting, you know, minimum, right? So, you know, you definitely want to talk about the um, kind of summary, right, responses. So you should summarize what each article is about. You should compare and contrast. And then you should focus on the concluding kind of ideas. So I've given the links themselves to import, especially Artifice is a good one for film and literature. But the Primo is the university one. You can also find that if you're just on a general page and you go to uh, library and then it gives you the Primo one already. But this is what I mean uh, by review. So let's, um, let's say, you know, um, Or actually, no, you know what, uh, Macbeth, um, I think GPAC is performing Macbeth. So, like, I'm just going to do Macbeth adaptations, and let's be specific here, and let's do film. Um, so, I'm just going to do in everything, just to kind of show you a couple things. So, I already see a couple things. Notice how, okay, so, um, The Economist, Online Journal... Right. A lot of times you could see in terms of the um, sources, whether it's peer reviewed or not here, it actually is peer reviewed. So that's awesome. Maybe I don't want to use this one. You know what? Maybe I want to use this one because this is an actual peer review journal. It's legit. Right. It's Shakespeare Quarterly. What you could do, though, is over here. Notice how I could actually mark peer reviewed, apply the filters and automatically I'm going to get stronger ones. Now I don't have to worry about whether they're peer reviewed or not. And you could tell just by the name of the journal, right? We have literature film quarterly. We have again, Shakespeare quarterly. We have very specific, you know, journals. In this case, this looks like, oh, so the University of Toronto quarterly, you know, so all these important journals um, are here.
for you. Now, um, I don't, there are no reviews. Um, let me see if there's any. No, I don't see any. So if for some reason in the title, it usually it's in brackets, it will actually say review, then um, you don't want to use that source. You only want to use the sources that are actually academic journals. Let me just see if I type in the word review to show you kind of what I mean here. Um, okay, no, it's not coming up. Yeah, okay, so that's not. Uh, oh, okay, here we go, good. Here, so no matter, if you ever see the title where it's all of a sudden in parentheses the word is actually review even though this is in a scholarly journal it's not actually an academic essay it's a review about a book so there's a difference because you don't want to have people review books because they're not they're just basically summarizing if the book is good for research or if it's good for teaching that's not what we want we want essays like this where they're actually making a good specific argument so that's just um you know an important idea to watch out for again you could click on peer review uh, you could even um, change the dates and all that you know so I, this date is just automatic but you could go no matter what you're searching for just you know put 2005 2015 and things will be automatically refined primo is pretty self-explanatory and it's pretty user-friendly but again, I just wanted to show you a couple of things in terms of if you're having trouble finding scholarly sources to, again, click on peer review and then click on the date ranges. And then no matter what, you'll be within the parameters of the assignment. As I said, the artifice too, and I'll just open that just briefly to kind of show you the artifice is a really great um, multi you know genre and multimedia uh, academic peer-reviewed journal um, if I just type in Marvel movies I can see what happens you know whoop, I should actually spell Marvel correctly <laughs> let's see what happens um, uh, okay let's just go to fan fiction and um, LGBTQ representation here. I don't know if this is specifically Marvel um, or not, but again, that's the thing, right? So, you know, fan fiction obviously is a part of adaptation. It would be great to, if you're interested in fan fiction, go for it. You know, there's Lord of the Rings and all sorts of things. So um, here, you know, um, I just want to, normally the um, search engines are a little bit better with the results here. I don't know if this site is just not, oh, I keep up spelling it. Um, I might just do something specific because I see like X-Men, um, superheroes. So, okay, so yeah, um, let's just see what this one is. So let's see you're interested in Marvel. Oh yeah, see this is an article yet. Okay, that's a topic. Okay, so I see Daredevil. Uh, role of Thanos and Avengers. So any of these would work, right? So, you know, whatever you're interested in, that's what you should research, right? Um, but again, find two sources and so forth to um, compare and contrast and everything. So here's basically um, one way that you could do it, right? Um, this is uh, comparing sources. Um, if you notice here, focused on the American dream, comparing and contrasting two sources. Notice how this is an essay format. And again, using just kind of specific ones, this student is comparing and contrasting and so forth, focusing on the overall theme of the American dream in these two works of scholarly analyses. So check out the example, just to give you a good kind of groundwork or template in terms of figuring out how to approach this assignment. But basically, again, that's why I also give you, let me go back to the, um, to the scholarly synthesis. That's why I also give you this good outline where I'm expecting, you know, in the introduction, a clear summary of both of the authors. What they're trying to prove why are they trying to prove it then how do they prove it right their evidence and so forth what are their concluding thoughts and then your own conclusion should you know take on this okay so what should future scholars look at what should future scholars do with this kind of topic and so forth what what should they look at in the future if someone was going to research this same argument what could they add you know certain you know some sort of specific kind of 
looking to the future kind of deal or call for more research kind of approach, right? Uh, in terms of, again, other journals, these are also good, um, but uh, again, the Prima one is probably the best one to use since it encapsulates all the different um, journals. The grading scale should be pretty self-explanatory as well. Again, 0 to 15, just for the summary of the introductions, right? I should know, again, what the author's arguments are, how do they kind of um, add to a conversation in terms of a specific topic and so forth then you should have a clear summary of their arguments thesis statements minor premises and so forth you should have a clear summary of the evidence right how do they prove their points and then in terms of your analysis again you should be comparing and contrasting maybe not in the first paragraph um, or I should say the first supporting paragraph, but pretty soon you should you know have a good kind of compare and contrast approach again summary of the conclusions the strength of your own conclusion Strength of the sources, so that should be an automatic 10 points. Grammar, always important, and then format, always important. So that adds up to 100. Obviously, if you have questions, email me, post them to the Canvas form. If not, just go look on this assignment and take care.